Hello everybody and welcome. It is Wednesday, 4 p.m. Central European time, so it's webinar time. Our webinar session centers around the topic of populism and is part of the Nova Migra, that is Norms and Values in European Migration Crisis Project funded by the EU. The Nova Migra project tackles a topical issue that has become prominent in recent years in political science, the question of the rise of populism, its connection with migration and its effects on Western democracies. The accompanying five-part webinar series covers the relationship of migration and populism from various levels of abstraction. So we'll go from the philosophical to the socio-political approaches. The presentations will be accompanied by slides summarizing the content of the presentation. The webinar, by nature, is an interactive platform, so please feel free to join the discussion through our chat feature. Your questions will be answered and your remarks discussed after the presentation. And if you have missed something or would like to listen to any of the presentations again, we'll be sending the recording of the webinars around soon. So let's get started. Last week, we heard Ms. Eva Sienashi and Ms. Eva Gedeu introduce two right-wing populist parties from Western Europe, the Front National, which looks back to a history of almost half a century, and the newcomer in the political arena, the German AFD. Today, we turn to Eastern Europe with the webinar entitled Migration and Xenophobia. It discusses how the Hungarian government formed the migration discourse through various anti-refugee strategies to increase their popularity. Our presenter today is Endre Sik, who is an external researcher at the Center of Social Sciences Budapest and Professor Emeritus at ELTE, Faculty of Social Sciences. He has also been a fellow of several research centers across Europe. Please welcome Endre Sik and enjoy the webinar. Do you hear me? Is there anyone there? Shall I start? Okay, then. Here goes the title of my presentation, The Moral Panic Button a Hungaricum. So that's basically the, the ultimate message. I hope I will come as a conclusion by the time of time we are given, about an hour, I was told. So I start now without further ado. Uh, the first, uh, let's say the starting point, the first slide is about the moral panic. I won't bore you with the details because I guess you know about it. This is a very standard, originally a social psychological theory but it was used uh, very efficiently for some time by communication experts to understand the processes of uh, how the media uh, can be manipulating can be used as a manipulator by manipulators as a device the basic structure is that first you identify a problem a problem which is relevant unquestionably but then you simplify it enough that you can talk about it with uh, uh, with uh, the proper level and the proper way how you think you can uh, be, it can be useful for you and uh, usefulness in this uh, sense means you stigmatize a certain act or a certain population and you use it for a media campaign for action because you want to achieve something uh, this process sometimes is used as framing, uh, and there is also another term, priming, but I won't go into details because we don't need it. What is important for us at the moment is only that this is a standard procedure. There is nothing, uh, I would say, unusual as far as the moral panic and the use of moral panic in media and in general communication in case the political actors want to achieve something. Let me immediately tell you, and not only the political actors. Uh, it can be used uh, for, for, for market uh, reasons as well, but that's not important. But what is important, that what I'm going to talk about is much more than the moral panic itself. 
the migration related issues very often are used as the as a theme, the basic theme of moral panic. The reason of it is that the migration by definition is a social uh, phenomenon which creates for a lot of people uh, the basis of uh, moral panic because uh, people have, uh, I would even dare to say, are coded biologically to feel a certain amount of uneasiness, certain elements of fear from the others with capital O, with those who are not us, but who are them. And by definition, migration means that they are crossing the borders and coming to our land. And therefore, there is an embedded element of migration as a socioeconomic process, which has uh, the capacity to create uh, fear, and fear is the basis of moral panic. Now, the two on this slide, you, say, you see two examples. The first is the Game of Thrones, which means that uh, the winter is coming and going and coming and going and coming. The message is that this is a repeated and ongoing process and it's always a danger, which you see very often much bigger than in fact it is. That's, I would dare to say, the way how in Europe, uh, the Western Hemisphere, the Western countries, the EU-15 usually uh, see migration or used to see migration within the European uh, sphere as well. And then the other side of the slide, that's the East European basis of fear, because that's the emigration. Very often in uh, Eastern Europe, the countries, the uh, people of the street, the men of the street, and often, of course, politicians as well, uh, create panic, saying that uh, our population is gone, we are about to end, our culture is diminishing, we lose our bests, uh, we lose our labor force, we lose our capacity to reproduce our population, so emigration is the basis of uh, fear. Now, these go together, of course, the two hand in hand very happily. So fear creates more fear and fear refers to fear on the other side of the border as well. And all is based on the fact that migration by definition is a in there has this inbuilt capacity to create moral panic. But the moral panic button I'm going to talk about this time is much more than that, because up until now, I refer to moral panic as a more or less natural characteristic of media uh, and communication activities and, my, and refer to migration as a, I would again dare to say, a nature, natural element of, uh, of, uh, of a basis of, of fear production. But what the moral panic button is, much more than that, first of all, there is no cons constraint, a centrally organized, centrally initiated finance and organized and monitored form of panic creation. So this is not just happening in the media by various, sometimes they are called moral panic uh, entrepreneurs who have an idea and who have certain interest, vested interest in having uh, some sort of moral panic and then do their best to create it. No, this is a centrally organized, a very well financed and a very long term uh, investment, high, high, high capacity investment for a very long time. The second characteristic of this institutionalized form of moral panic uh, creation is that there are selected themes, themes attacking the same topic from different angels. In our case, this is migration. And what is important that they don't just talk about the migration in general. There are very carefully uh, devised uh, technologies, how to select certain elements of the general migration or refugee process. And uh, they select these uh, capacities and combine these capacities to reach all segments of the societies uh, emotionally condition them, every part of the society get their own share of their fear creation moment. And they rely on the various sensitivities of the different parts of the society. So this is a very carefully designed and a very complex uh, moral panic creation, not just a general rep simple repetition of a single theme. The third characteristic that this is a long term project project, I will show you later with certain examples in case of Hungary, how it works. 
And this long term, this long term project consists several phases, and these phases overlaps, and therefore you can you can say that there is a continuous pressing of the moral panic button, and all these presses refer to the previous phase and gives a solid basis to the next stage. And these overlapping create and reinforce the whole process as a single high uh, intensity uh, moral panic creation process. And large but, last but not least, it targets the entire population using all forms of media, but not only media. That's very important to realize because originally the moral panic is a sort of media-based manipulation. But in our case, you will see it, it has much more uh, te technologies embedded into this process. You will see there are, there are special technologies by which they can reach those parts of the population who do not consume media at all, who do not listen to the radio, who do not watch TV, who do not even have access to, to, the, to the World Wide Web, who just live their solid, often poor and very uh, isolated life somewhere in the middle of the Great Hungarian Plain. But they are also reached because there are two spe very important and very specific elements of this moral panic bottom activity. Uh, I will come to it later for more details. Uh, the first one is the so-called national consultation. And the other one is the uh, referendum. In both cases, the message, what the organizers of the moral panic button wanted to send to the Hungarian population uh, goes not through the media, but directly into every hun Hungarian household because they get letters and in the letters they get very uh, direct information what they have to think about, about what sort of things in relation of the refugee crisis. So that's the basic structure. Now I will give you some examples in regard of the story we experienced in Hungary between 2015 and 2019. So it's four years. It's a four years long story and I just select certain elements of it. I won't bore you with all the details of all these uh, stories. The first is the, how it started. Now, uh, as far as I can judge, uh, it started after the 2014. Uh, there was a sort of more or less spontaneous uh, uh, action by which the population wanted to express the uh, unhappiness with the introduction of a new uh, tax on net uh, use. And uh, there was a, a significant decrease of the uh, popularity of the ruling party or the government. Uh, and that was the, at the end of 2014. And uh, I assume, of course, no one knows about it because this is more or less a complete secret, but I assume that uh, the, the think tanks who wanted to increase the popularity of the uh, Hungarian government and the ruling party look Try, started to look for themes which can bring back this popularity. And uh, in January 2015, after the Charlie Hebdo uh, terrorist attack in Paris, uh, they realized that perhaps migration and terrorism, closely related issues, that's the way they interpreted it in the, from the very beginning, might be uh, the best way how to get back this lost popularity. Uh, on this uh, slide, you just see a, a picture. Orban is there somewhere. I really don't know where, but he must be somewhere there. Uh, yeah, I see. Just uh, behind. Oh, yes, where the red arrow is. That's where. So it's very good position, very close to the fire. And uh, the other, it doesn't matter that it's in Hungary. And it, what it is says, and you see the first column, which means Orban Viktor, that he was the one who thematized from the very beginning the issue. Even from Paris, he sent the first message. Again, let me remind you that it's early 2015. So it's the very beginning of the whole process that terrorism and migration is the major problem Europe has to face with in the near future. 
And we, the Hungarian government, will do our best to defend our nation against this threat. That was the basic message in a sing, sing, single sentence. Uh, later on, since I'm going, I, I, I studied this issue, I've been studying this issue for, for already five years now, uh, I would say that it was the beta test for this uh, migration panic button. They tried whether it works or not. I guess they did a lot of focus groups and a lot of uh, small-scale research, and they see that it works. So that after this first message, they started to create the details of the moral panic button structure and the technology itself. Uh, the first was a billboard campaign in May 2015, some months after this first message. Uh, billboards are very important, not only because they are, uh, you can have, you had the same spots on the TV, so it's, and, and um, in the print and media as well. But again, I, I wanted to emphasize from the very, very beginning that they wanted to reach the countryside. They wanted to see the entire population, and the billboard is the best. Uh, media to reach them because you just cannot avoid it. You, wherever you turned on, on your way to your to home or to the workplace or to the mall or to do anything, you stumbled into these huge uh, billboards with a very straightforward marriage, ma message. And, and, and the first one, on, I don't know whether it's the left side or the right side, you, we don't want illegal immigrants. Illegal is very important because that's... Uh, that's the, uh, the, the negative connotation which you should immediately add from that on uh, if you wanted to use the migration uh, uh, theme uh, as a standard uh, characteristic. And the other, the other one was, uh, you, if you come to Hungary, you should not steal the jobs of the Hungarians, which, of course, a complete fake, because none of the refugees wanted to stay in Hungary, let alone steal the jobs of the Hungarians. They wanted to, to reach as soon as they, where they were possible, the German or, uh, or the Austrian border. But anyway, that's a threat, which uh, the man of the street, you know, in normal circumstances feel as a real threat because everybody is afraid of unemployment and the loss of income. So it's a very well-funded basis of fear creation, especially if it's a, 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 a beautiful blonde lady who is sending this message. We always believe in beautiful blonde, blonde ladies, at least macho Hungarians are supposed to feel like that. Now the technology. Uh, because the technology at the same time was very refined, and this, these two questions are from uh, the uh, first national consultation, because those two billboards were supposed to establish the basis of the uh, national consultation. The national, national consultation campaign means that, you, uh, that, uh, that the government sent to letters to every Hungarian household, eight million for and not only the household, every Hungarian citizen for eight million uh, potential voters, arguing that they need information and they are willing and happy to provide them with this information and the information related to the refugee crisis and explained to the Hungarians who were uh, starving for this information what's going on in fact around us, around Hungary, and in Europe. Uh, the format of, uh, however, was not a letter. There was a letter with a smiling prime minister, uh, just uh, making sure that there will be a, a reaction on the, on the national consultation. They fill out the form and we'll send back the form. The sending back the, the letter was free of charge. But the format of this uh, technology was a fake a public opinion survey. I don't know how familiar you are with the techniques. This technique is usually called push-pull, which means that you don't really care about uh, learning what the public opinion think, how the ordinary people feel about uh, the issues and what, what would be the represent if it were a representative sample, what would be the outcome of a public opinion survey? Instead of they want to... Uh, tell them what to think, how to think, and what terms 
uh, to use when thinking about a certain problem. So you manipulate them by the questions, faking that you are interested in their answers. Just uh, for those who are interested in the technology of public opinion polls, I, I give you these two examples. The first question is, do you think that Hungary could be the target of an act of terror in the next few years? Now, when I teach it at the university, these next few years is an absolutely no-no. You cannot have a question when, uh, for the next few years because it, no one knows how long, what can happen in a few years. Anything can happen in a few years. You always have to be very strict that in the next few months or in the next year. That's the longest period you are allowed to ask in a public opinion survey. So in itself, this is a, a manipulation technique which makes sure that the people will feel that, yes, in the next few years, anything can happen. Why not uh, an act of terror? And the other, even worse, no one passes at the university if this type of uh, sin they commit. The, uh, the category is to answer these questions. There is a very real chance it could occur or out of the question. Now, first of all, the category should be balanced. That is two positive, two negative, or five poss possible answers, then two positive, two negative, and one in between, one neutral. But this is an unbalanced uh, uh, because there are two uh, categories that if you choose that you agree with the question and only one, which is the negative one. And what is even worse, the, the wording of the two, possi two, two positive questions are uh, very straightforward. The very real chance, that means that uh, you feel, you really fear that this type of terror might occur anytime soon and would be uh, devastating for the Hungarian population and for you yourself. The second one is a lighter version of it. And the negative version, version is out of question is, of course, an absurd version because nothing is out of question. So you make sure that the, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 to select that, that category because it is very absurd to... to, to, to uh, select such an item. Uh, the second question, basically the same, but in that case, example, what is important that in the question itself is embedded to various uh, underlying and overlapping uh, assumptions, which you want to make sure that the people who read the question immediately learn. There are some who think that's a standard way how to ask for public opinion, that mismanagement of the immigration question, that's the negative statement by Brussels, that's the culprit, the scapegoat. You will see only one of the scapegoats, but very often use scapegoat. Very often, uh, Brussels is pictured in the Hungarian uh, moral panic button as the equivalent of the former uh, empires who ruled in Hungary for, his, uh, for for centuries, like the Russian Empire or the Habsburg Empire, and now Brussels rules above us. And they uh, mismanaged the immigration question, which may have something to do with increased terrorism. That's important, again, because you remember that in the, very f in the beta test, already migration and terrorism was supposed to go hand in hand. So the manipulation again and again reinforce this message even in the question. And the unbalanced uh, answers again as a normal standard in this push polls. Now the conclusion of this uh, national referendum was that the people decided the country must be defended. Uh, th that gives a sort of warlike situation when the country must be defended, it's under attack. And the people agreed with the, uh, with the suggested way how to think about it by the government and, and gives power to the government that, uh, to, to defend the country against uh, immigration and terrorism. The next, I uh, remember that by not only national consultation, but referendum is also a technique by which you can reach the entire population, not only the media consumers. It was in October 2016, about, uh, about a year later. Uh, it started much earlier again with billboards and media campaigns. But again, the, the, the important message in this case was, do you want the European Union to prescribe 
the mandatory settlement of non-Hungarian citizens in Hungary, even without the consent of parliament. Do not risk the future of Hungary. Vote no. Now, this, the context of this referendum was that at that time there were plans, only plans of mandatory uh, relocation, plans of refugees who earlier came to uh, Europe and, and hundreds of thousands of them were uh, in Italy and in mostly in Italy and in, in Greece, some of them in Spain as well. And they wanted to, to and they tried to, to get to, to, to other European countries and to, to have a certain organization of this whole process uh, to decrease the, uh, the, the danger of, of, of uh, further flooding into in an uncontrolled format. The idea was a sort of organized relocation. And that was the reaction of the Hungarian government that that's again something which the which Brussels want to to uh, apply to Hungary because they want to rob us from uh, our well-deserved sovereignty and they want uh, to destroy the culture and they want to destroy our Christian background. So this is something which we have to disagree with. And they asked again the entire Hungarian population for billions of, of money. Just a single question whether they agree with it or not, and they suggested that no one should agree with it. Uh, this is in Hungarian, and I don't want to bore you again with the details. What is important if you this shows the five channels uh, on the television. The first uh, column, uh, where you can see the red uh, message, that means that the Hungarian public television, 86%. Of the prime time news started with migration related issues. In the other, uh, less closely uh, government related uh, TV channels, it was much less. Uh, the, the last two, one at that time, they were, uh, let's say, unrelated to the, to the government. They were not public televisions, but market oriented televisions. They didn't. Uh, have migration as the first news during prime time. The second row show where the 42% you can find in the first cell, second row, that shows uh, what proportion of the entire time of prime time uh, news were focusing on migration. And you see in the public television, this was almost all the time the first news, and almost half of the time uh, they focused only on migration issues. So it was really made sure that every Hungarian uh, household uh, learn and learn repeatedly and almost continuously on migration related fear basis. And just to make sure that it is fear, the 91%, which means again, you know, the public television means that it had a negative message. So the refugee issue as a threat, as a, a basis of fear, as something dangerous was portrayed all the time, every Hungarian household for, for months. Then came the second uh, 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 billboard campaign. It, it overlapped uh, uh, with the referendum. So it was a sort of information campaign to make sure that the referendum will uh, be hundred percent no. Now the information campaign again was very one-sided, if not completely fake. Uh, the first one, that tutta in Hungarian means that did you know? So that that's because they wanted to inform the population because it was an information campaign. Okay. So they sticked to this. Uh, fake idea that this is just pure information. They just serve the people. They just want to help the Hungarian a population to make the proper de the decision. But then what they wanted to learn us uh, was that only from Libya, one million immigrants want to come to Europe. One million, it's a, it's a every number, which is such a, a big number is a threat itself. The other one that was that the terror attack in Paris was committed by immigrants, which was not. But then what is important that, again, migration and terrorism hand in hand is portrayed as a threat, as a threat which, against which only the government can defend the Hungarian population. 
this is the result, the result succeeded. So the government succeed, succeeded to convince the people that it is a real set. Uh, Meguzen took uh, Brussels, that means that we send the word to Brussels, no. 98% said no. There is a minor problem, however, because this 98% was of, among those who answered the, the referendum uh, questionnaire, which was, however, only 42 per 43% of the total population. So it was a minority. Still, uh, they agreed that those who didn't answer didn't send back the referendum uh, letter, they might still agree with it, just they didn't have time, they didn't think it that important, they think that it's so obvious the question, so it shouldn't be really uh, a matter to, to discuss with. What is important that uh, the 98% uh, of those who agreed is almost 2 million, I think 2 million persons, and 2 million persons is good enough to, to give strength to the government to uh, to decide that this should be going on and the Hungarian uh, population should be defended by them. This is April 2017. This is the Stop Brussels campaign. I mentioned already that uh, Brussels was the main culprit at this stage. Later there we, you will see there was a shift in, in uh, scape, scape, scapegoating technology. Uh, the question is a very difficult and it needs a lot of explanation. Uh, the effect, the, 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 the basic idea was now that there are foreign supported organizations, that is the civil societies, who are stealing money and who are financed from abroad, who wanted to jeopardize our independence, that is our sovereignty. And uh, the question is what to do. Uh, should we register them and uh, just mildly uh, to, 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 to control them? Or we should allow them to continue their risky activities without any supervision? And of course, there is no uh, normal people would say that we should do, we should let anything happen without any control with anyone. Uh, involved in it. So therefore, it was uh, already a, a trivial question that everybody answered the A. However, that was not in fact the case because you will see later that the, what happened was a very strict control of the civic society. But just to make sure that this is, again, uh, a, very, a, a very straightforward a ve and a very effective way to to let every Hungarian citizen to know what they have to think about this issue, a new scapegoat was in, uh, in, uh, entered into, the, into this uh, discourse, not instead of Brussels and the civil society, but on top of it, and that's the Soros Jörg, who is uh, say, who was portrayed in this uh, in this whole discourse as a billionaire who has all the money and who is financing all types of actors who are against the Hungarian sovereignty. So in this anti soros campaign, there was a, a, again a national consultation organized. So it was not just the media, but again, every Hungarian ha uh, household got a, a letter, which contained uh, messages, uh, which by the billboard, so you can see here were from the very beginning reinforced. Again, with the same uh, same uh, fakes, like Soros would relocate millions from Oost, uh, from Africa and the Near East, and the Soros plan endangers the Christian culture in Europe. And so, stop Soros. That's that was the basic message everybody had to learn. Uh, and the final culprit, which was entered, which which was entered, which was which was introduced into this whole moral panic button issue at a later stage, only in 2018, March, was the United Nations. At that time, there were some discussions in the United Nations to work on a new uh, worldwide migration plan to, or to make this whole process, which really 
was seen as a worldwide uh, pot which really was seen as a potential to have a worldwide uh, crisis if it remains uncontrolled. So the UN decided to try to control it and to try to work out some sort of control on the long run. And the immediate reaction on behalf of the Hungarian government one was that the UN wants us to accept migrants continuously. Hungary decides, not the UN. So again, our sovereignty is threatened now by the UN. We have to find the U fight the UN as well. Last but not least, this is 2018, the parliamentary election. It was also dominated by this discourse. Of course, uh, the government didn't want to lose any potential to, to use uh, uh, the migration and refugee uh, discourse uh, and the moral panic button to make sure that the popularity of, it, of the government remains high. So this, it shows the four of the Hungarian, four of the, four of the leaders of the Hungarian, uh, let's say, important uh, political parties uh, holding wire cutters in their, in their hands. And the message is that Soros is behind them, hugging them, hugging the leaders of these four parties who are competing for, uh, for the election against the ruling party. And they claim that they would dismantle the fence, which of course was not the case at all. But that was again the way how they could be uh, used as a specific target at this specific stage of the moral panic button creation to be used uh, as to, to, to maintain the popularity of the government. So that was basically the, the genesis, the ontogenesis or the story of the moral panic button I described in the very beginning. Now let's see how it affected the Hungarian population. What you can see here is a long-term uh, uh, public opinion, the, the results of a long-term uh, time series of uh, xenophobia. Uh, I did since 2000, uh, sorry, 1992 up until 2017. The question we asked was uh, exactly the same during the entire period. Uh, would you agree that uh, Hungary, uh, that Hungary, that Hungary should allow asylum seekers to Hungary? Uh, now, again, let me repeat it again. Would you allow asylum seekers to enter Hungary? All of them? None of them? Or it depends. The all of them I would describe as the xenophiles, xenophiles, because that's a very, uh, I would say, uh, strange answer. No real politician and no, uh, I think, uh, a uh, citizen with certain sort of political awareness should agree with such an item that everybody without any control can be allowed to enter Hungary. And you can see that it has always been below 10%. It's a minority position. The, the two alternatives which most of the Hungarian population chose were the xenophobe, who said that the Hungarian border should be closed uh, before every asylum seeker without any further explanation, or the, I would say the thinker or the real political, real politicians would answer that, that it depends. It depends on who they are, why they came, what they want, and so on, and so on, and so on. I don't want to go into the details. So uh, these were the two competing, really competing alternatives the Hungarian population from the very beginning chose. Now, I won't go through the whole uh, time series uh, and the details of the analysis. What is important is the end of it. 2015, you remember that was the year when the moral panic button was starting to work. And if you uh, see the end of this time series, that was also the year when the first time since the beginning migration exists in Hungary because before the change of the system before two. Uh, 1990, there were no migration in Hungary because Hungary was a closed uh, border uh, socialist part of the socialist camp and no one was allowed to come or go. So since the beginning of the migration process at all, this was the first year when there were more xenophobe, xenophobic answers than real political answers. And it has inc further increased in 2000, between 2016 and 17, despite the fact 
and that's very important to emphasize, that the crisis which existed in, in, in the summer or in the early uh, autumn of 2015, when indeed the hundreds, hundred thousands crossed the Schengen border practically without control and immediately left for Austria, but that doesn't matter. They entered Hungary and marched through Hungary, so that can be described as a crisis for the average uh, citizen. They were gone. There were no more. There was a, a fence. The, the border was closed. There were no migrant, no refugee, no asylum seeker, whatever term you want to use. There was not a single in Hungary. Still, Thanks to this moral panic button, the pushing, the pressings, the repeated pressings of the moral panic button, the xenophobia, the proportion of xenophobia has increased further on. This is a sort of summary of the story. Uh, the red, uh, uh, sorry, I, I think we better start with the uh, green line. The green line shows the accumulated results of the public opinion surveys showing the popularity of the governing party. Remember, I started the whole story that in uh, late 2014, there was a significant drop of popularity. That's when those who started to work on uh, the moral panic button, to designing this moral panic button, uh, realized that we have to do something to get back popularity. So that's where it started. The red arrow, number one, was the first slide I showed to you when Orban even in I think at that time he was still in Paris, sent the first message, the post Hebdo, Hebdo speech, in which he used migration and terrorism as uh, closely related issues. So that was when the popularity was in the absolute negative end of the whole story. And then came, I don't want to repeat it, uh, the various uh, pressings of the button. You can see here several pressings. Uh, and there was a short period, uh, the mass influx, that was the 2015 uh, summer and autumn when there was a real crisis situation, I would say. And then uh, little by little, the popularity of, the, of, uh, of Fidesz increased. It reached not only the original level, uh, but uh, by now, uh, it's, it's, uh, the Fidesz succeeded to increase further on the popularity, which it is important at this point to make sure that this 45% uh, of uh, voting uh, for Fidesz is enough for getting two thirds of the parliamentary seats. So this type of popularity index, uh, when it reached the 40%, the original 40% where it started, and then beyond it, what made sure for Fidesz to, 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 to anticipate uh, the ultimate victory, uh, getting not only back the popularity, but being able to convert it into direct political power. The other trend, uh, I think it's a sort of brownish, reddish, yellowish something, Orange, let's call it orange. The orange is the proportion of xenophobes, what I showed you but the, uh, in the previous slide, where that, that, that's the end of this uh, uh, time series. It shows that for a certain period of time, it has decreased, despite the first two pressings of the moral panic button, when there were hundreds of thousands of migrants in, in Hungary, marching through Hungary, that actually decreased xenophobia because that, in that case, it was a real issue. It was a real problem. So people and in the, in the media showed uh, the, the refugees marching through various uh, settlements and at the border and so on. And the people met them and realized that it's a real problem. So they reacted on it as, as, as normal human beings should do with concern and try to think about what to do, how to do, and, and evaluated the, the concrete actions of the government. So it was not the moral panic button, but the real problem, which uh, upon which the reaction of the Hungarian population uh, decreased the level of xenophobia. At once the migrants were gone, the refugee crisis was over, but the moral panic button was kept on being pressed again and again, then the, moral, uh, the Hungarian population was again 
and defenseless against this manipulation and the level of xenophobia skyrocketed and as we saw before it's still very high it hasn't started to decrease since then to give it into a comparative perspective this is from the european social survey the field work was done during the uh, more or less during the refugee crisis, the, the, the peak of the refugee crisis. And uh, I don't have the data here in all European countries. Terrorism, mostly immigration, and less so terrorism, became the, the, the biggest problem they foresaw for the European uh, countries in the coming year. But in Hungary, you see, due to this moral panic button, I would dare to say, twice the proportion of the second and third Estonia and the Czech Republic or Lithuania uh, was the proportion of those who wanted to reject, to close the borders. The European Social Survey practically contained the same uh, wording I used in the previous time series data. So no, no, no one, no, no, nobody was, a, no, nobody is allowed to come from poorer countries outside Europe, which practically meant migrants and refugees. So the Hungarian population immediately uh, reached uh, twice the, not the average of the European Union, but twice the second or third uh, competing countries uh, by the European comparative, strictly comparative European survey. This is a, a longer term effect, the same European uh, social survey. The result of it, uh, what I showed you, it was the uh, fifth round when the Hungarian, the, the, the Hungarian uh, data is the highest one, which means that the Hungarian level of xenophobia has been, has been higher, significantly higher than in any other uh, European country, no question about it. But after 2015, it has skyrocketed. In other countries, there were a certain amount of increase of the level of xenophobia because it's a real problem. Uh, slightly increased in certain countries, much less in other countries, but what is important from our po point of view, that in Hungary it skyrocketed and that can be only the uh, result of the moral panic button. So the effective manipulation. And here is the final result. It's uh, the end of the story in May, late May 2015. There came a stop Soros bill against the civil uh, organizations. It's like it's more or less the same like uh, in Russia um, that uh, they should be uh, registered and should and and if they read if they get money from outside from foreign countries above a certain proportion, which is easy to reach this proportion because they don't, they don't get money from Hungary. So it's every, every, uh, every civil organization working uh, with the refugees uh, immediately reach this, uh, this proportion. They should be uh, stopped and heavily taxed. Now, to sum up, I argued that this moral panic button, while uh, it is, it has all the basic characteristics which uh, similar which is similar to any other country the how the media uh, deal with uh, uh, moral panic issues like migration very often is the case but the moral panic button is something special i suggested it uh, to consider it as a hungaricum now hungaricum for those who are not familiar with this term uh, as part of uh, making sure that the Hungarian identity is maintained and the self-esteem of the Hungarian society is, is high enough. We defined certain characteristics of certain products, which we call as ours and only ours. There is a government uh, committee. Uh, since 2012, there is an act uh, uh, which makes sure that this, this committee decides what are the, the which products qualify, uh, are important enough, and has the uh, elements of the Hungarian uh, national norm values and, and, uh, and uh, national values, which makes them uh, as a Hungarian. Here you have, you have three examples, the spritzer, for those who 
are abstinent. This is wine and and spritz, wine and and soda water. Uh, different combinations. There is a very uh, delicate way how to define what sort of spritzer we are talking about, but I won't go into details. Only Hungarian soda details. There are the hussars. The, Ages ago, I used to learn Esperanto, and in the Esperanto, there are two words which originates from the Hungarian language. It was, it's one of them is Husaro, and the other is Korbaso. So it's really a Hungarian. And the third is Puskas. I don't think you need any further explanation why Puskas is qualified to be a Hungarian. Now, my argument is, however, that it, the, the moral panic button has a very specific technology including not only the mass media manipulative techniques, but also the national consultations and the referendum and uh, dominant making a dominant discourse even during parliamentary election instead of a lot of other important issues which should be discussed during an election campaign. And also with the billboards and also with all the media uh, domination, that qualifies as a moral panic button, as a Hungaricum, which was invented in this format in Hungary and which is very dangerous in the future because other countries also might like the idea to use this type of action. And so, and it is not without uh, precedence, of course, in history. The first example uh, is uh, the Roman, the Roman Empire, uh, the Panem et Circenses, because these are the two basic issues which are needed by a populist government uh, if they want popularity uh, to give uh, bread and entertainment for the population, then they will be happy so the government can act as they want. And the other is from the Nazi Germany, it's Goebbels, Dr. Goebbels, and the message is in, if, uh, uh, if, you, if you lie big enough, uh, it always has some credibility in it, if, and if you keep on repeating it, then sooner or later everybody will uh, accept it, or if not accept it, that at least their deep, deeper emotional structure, consciously or voluntarily, will reflect on it. Now that's framing and priming for you by the Hungarian monarch, moral panic button invention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sheik for this wonderful, very interesting lecture. And I encourage the audience to put uh, questions, uh, <coughs> and, uh, remarks and comments. But before they do so, may I ask a, a question, please? Um, as you have presented it in your excellent presentation, this type of propaganda works, works very well. The government Absolutely. won. The popularity is high the, time. High time. The, the government won the election uh, last just, time. But, uh, to third majority, which means that uh, within the parliamentary, they have complete uh, control of all committees and all decision-making processes. That's right, but, but but do you think it would work for for a long run? To so, uh, is there a point when is there a point where the the audience would think that it would be too much. So is there a point when, 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 when the society would feel that it is too much, thank you very much, uh, we don't go along with it? Uh, well, the honest answer, I have no idea. Because for, to answer this question, I should have had some uh, research material. And I bet that there, are, there have been several small scale and not necessarily that small scale public opinion surveys, qualitative and quantitative, by the government that, that, they are, that their results are secret. So I don't have a chance to know what they show. My feeling is that uh, there is no, in quotation mark, a natural upper limit of being manipulated. However, uh, recently we know that there is a new uh, uh, selection of scapegoats. So that might mean that uh, think tanks who are working on this moral panic button now think that perhaps this migration issue is a bit boring now. It lost its uh, its potential to make sure that uh, the government popularity should should be defended, should remain high, and now they are are searching for new uh, issues. At the very beginning, in 2015, 
it was not not it was not the migration refugees which was the first they experimented with they experimented with uh, there was a civil uh, uh, a civil uh, an ngo financed by the norwegian government who who were attacked by the government claiming that uh, they are threatening the hungarian uh, sovereignty but the hungarian i think the, the, that 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 was not a successful attempt and uh, and uh, i think the hungarian uh, population didn't really care what the norwegians finance and what not and what the hungarian uh, ngo does or and what doesn't so it was not they also started a sort of discourse on change, uh, reintroducing the the death penalty for some weeks there were ideas that i think uh, that that was Orban Victor's proposal that uh, we should rethink this death penalty issue. That, and then that was a good idea because I bet that most of the Hungarian population would love to uh, have death penalty again. However, I think they decided that it's a it's a difficult issue because we signed certain international uh, contracts and that uh, would be very difficult to seriously to discuss it on the long run. So they abandoned these two. Uh, lines and then they discovered the refugee issue and i think now they also have a sort of uh, shift in their target skateboarding activities thank you very much um, um, i still encourage the audience to post questions and make remarks uh, comments but uh, until they do so if i may <laughs> i would have another person the last one maybe. so it, it, there is a point but is, is there a point of no return then when it all would lead to, I dare to say, to, to violence, to hatred. So can the government control the whole issue? So altogether, how dangerous is the moral panic button? Uh, yeah, I, I would say it's, it's difficult to, to judge it because it depends on a certain normative element. If you think that it's bad to lie, to the population, then of course you discuss, discuss about it as uh, dangerous issues. However, if you are 100% sure that the Hungarian government do, do the, does the right thing and they really serve the Hungarian population and then migration is really a danger, which is of course, uh, it has the potential of being dangerous and 100 and 200,000 uh, migrants walking through a country, that's absolutely a danger unquestionably. And then the proper way how to deal with it, not to trying to solve the problem worldwide and long run, but an immediate reaction, the fence is the proper answer to it, no question about it. It's not an F solution, and it's not the long run solution, it might even be a very costly solution with further dangers. But if you don't believe it, then you just don't consider it as a dangerous issue. So it's very difficult to answer the question. What is important to realize, however, there are certain results, but not serious research, more like anecdotal evidence that, for example, children in kindergarten are talking about Soros as a dangerous uh, enemy. And this is a weird thing. This is really this really shows that this whole discourse has the potential to decrease the uh, tolerance of the entire population, and not only against the scapegoats, the chosen, well chosen scapegoats, but against everybody, including each of us. So against each other. Yeah, that's, that's very dangerous. Thank you very much for this answer. Uh, since uh, there are no questions uh, from the audience. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> What remains us is only to thank you very much for You're this welcome. wonderful, for this excellent uh, presentation. Uh, uh, on behalf of the audience, I may also say that uh, I urge the audience to join us again next week. Uh, don't forget, we will have another presentation by, by Professor Meleg next uh, Wednesday. So please join us again. But for now, from all of us here at the Budapest Objective Studio, it's goodbye. Bye.